Today I have an amazing product and a video that you're definitely going to want to watch. What makes this amazing? Let's get into the video. First look out of the box, we've got our station itself, the power cable, and here in the bottom we've got our different plates. Here you can see we have our 14 series, our 13 series, our 12 series, and the iPhone 10 and 11 series. And here we can see that it comes with a set of instructions if you're using 110 volts, which is going to be anybody in the States. If you're buying this out of country and you use a 220 volt socket, no need to follow these steps to alter this device. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we've currently got this one set up to uh, the proper setting. So what we're gonna look for is the SEE, um, and then we're gonna look for the P90, and then the L40. If it, we click through it, it says P90 and L40, then we don't have it to do anything. But I'm gonna show you how to get there just in case it is. So we're gonna hold down the, the, uh, the down button and then we'll turn it on. Let go. And we're already at the P90, but say you were at the P8, for example. Let's say you were here, right? Then simply what you do is you click through until you get to P90. And then you click down and you see how it says L40. But if you were a few moments later at the L10, then you just need to click through until you get through to the L40. Like that. Okay? And we'll simply turn it off and turn it back on. And there we go. Now you notice that it was set to 160 degrees Celsius. 160 degrees Celsius is definitely hot enough to where the solder between the sandwich boards will melt so that you can separate the top board from the bottom board. And for a practical example, here I've got this uh, 13 Pro Max uh, motherboard that has been separated because it was having service issues, which is on the bottom board and everything should be working now. We just need to reball and put back together. So I'm gonna show you a practical use of this, this heating pad with uh, both a reball and a, an install of the top board. And let's not forget also this plate, which is just a standard flat plate, which comes in handy for a lot of different applications. And I'll show you in a second the actual use of these, but the ability to be able to pivot these arms wherever you need them, but also slide them along these these rails on both the, the top and the bottom to be able to position these arms. That's that's a really unique feature that other plates don't have. They may have arms, but they'll, they will only have a certain reach. The adjustability here is pretty amazing. And it looks like we could actually, and you might even be able to transfer them to the uh, to the sides here if you really wanted to. Now here I've got a uh, the 13 uh, Pro Max board and I've, uh, I've actually dremeled out a little uh, cutout here so that I don't have to remove the antenna uh, when reballing most of these aren't uh, antenna cable friendly so uh, if you haven't adjusted yours do that so that it fits but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean up this border here and then I'm gonna get to uh, reballing it. I'm gonna take some flux and pipe it out around the border here. And now I'm gonna get my wick here. This is 1.5 millimeter goot wick. We'll carefully go over and remove any of the old solder. Then we should be left with it looking like this. We'll still have some burnt flux on there, but now we can go and clean that up. Use a microfiber cloth. Isopropyl alcohol. 
and just rub it gently with my finger. You can see all the flux coming off and depositing itself into the microfiber cloth. And then I'm left with a nice clean section with nice shiny, shiny pads. You go ahead and do that around the entire border. And there we go. Nice, clean, ready for a reball. I'm gonna get my stencil here. Add some isopropyl alcohol and really clean up the top side and the bottom side of the stencil. And check and make sure they're all nice and clean, clear of any debris. Line up the stencil. Now here I've got solder paste. You want to go with a lower melting soldering paste, like a 138, 148, 158, but nothing higher than that for the mid board. And I've used this uh, microfiber cloth to help dry out the solder paste a little bit so that it's easier to deposit on the board. Go ahead and Put it down inside the stencil. Make sure you get it into every single one. Now the hardest part, the hardest place to deposit the solder paste without issue is around the uh, the SIM card reader as it uh it's so close to the stencil that some of the solder likes to sometimes get trapped on the edge there i'm going to do my best to avoid getting a lot of solder or excess solder there i just don't want to miss any spots because i don't want to have to redo this again cleaning it because at that point you have to clean up the entire board again by wicking it all the way off and starting all over with this whole process so it can be time consuming if you have to redo it. Sometimes you have to reball it the way around it, but you can avoid it by preparing everything perfectly. Preparation is the key to, to reballing. A nice clean surface to work with. Now that I'm confident in that, I'm gonna go back over with my microfiber cloth. I'm gonna push the solder down through the holes against them, basically getting it to, 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 to smush into the logic board so that it has a physical connection with between the, uh, the logic board. Now I'm gonna grab the corner and slowly lift and peel. And if I do that right, I'm left with no solder stuck in in the, the frame here. And they've all deposited their little stacks inside or on their individual pads there. going to be using the plate for the 13 series for the 13 pro max specifically and we got to be extremely careful not to bump or agitate any of the solder paste that's on there i'm going to carefully lift this off i'll just hold it by the antenna so i don't touch the solder paste we'll line it up and set it down on the plate there and then there's the magnets that'll kind of help pull this into alignment there we go now we'll go ahead and turn this on and we'll let this heat up. You can see it's heating up relatively quick. It's going more than a degree a second here in real time. So this shouldn't take too long for it to get all the way up to 160. And as we heat it up slowly like this, what'll happen is the solder will start to kind of clump together and form uh, individual balls of solder on each one of those pads. And we'll be able to see them slowly start to melt and get shiny. And then we know we can turn off the, the heating platform and let it cool down for the next step. Now it's beeped saying that it's at temperature. Now we just have to wait for that heat to transfer through all the way to the logic board. Now you can actually start to see, look at the transformation happening already. 
Here they're all starting to melt and form their own little solder balls. Look at that. Pretty instantly, all of them have made it to be fully intact solder balls. Now we'll go ahead and turn it off, and I'm going to carefully lift up on the board, and we'll take it off and let it cool down. And while we let that cool down, now I need to take this top board and carefully go over and do the same thing by wicking off all of these pads, creating a nice even surface for the new solder to stick to. And it will happen in three, two, one. There we go, nice, clean, no solder, nice, ready, prepped, everything's nice and properly tinned, no gray pads, ready to receive the bottom board. All right, so this plate has cooled down to where I can touch it. Now we're gonna take 13 Pro Max board here, we'll line it up, and drop it in place, take our flux, and I'm not gonna go too heavy on the flux, but I want to ensure that there's plenty of flux. Now, if you don't know what flux is, flux acts as like a, a shield for the solder. It protects it from oxidizing. So it essentially is there as a, almost like a cleaning agent where it keeps the solder from, uh, uh, from, from oxidizing. When the solder oxidizes, it doesn't want to flow around from one place to the other. So yeah, having flux is necessary in order to get the, the, the solder to move from one place to the other. That's the gist of it. So smeared it around so that we got a kind of an even coating of it. Now we can take our top board. And if I can line it up straight, we're gonna line it up, make sure it's lined up perfectly. And once I've made those micro adjustments, we'll go ahead and turn on the platform, let it get up to temperature, and the, the board will, will actually physically drop and get sucked down by the surface tension of the solder, uh, sticking to the pads on the, on the top board. And then we can let it cool down and we've got a, a sandwich board that's back together and ready to install and, and test in the phone. All right, we'll go ahead and turn it on. And we're just gonna walk Watch it as it gets up to temperature. Now watch carefully as any moment now we're gonna see the board kind of just settle, drop just a little bit. That gap will kind of close up a little bit there. Maybe over here and back there you'll be able to see it. We're almost up to 160, so it'll beep at us in a second. There's the beep. Now we know we're there. Now we just have to wait for the top board to get hot enough to settle into the bottom board probably happen in the next 20 to 30 seconds or so. There, you can see it, it's settled. Now we'll turn it off. While it's still warm, I can double check the alignment by giving it little taps. I don't want to push down at all, just touching on the side of the board a little bit, but you can see the gap is closed up right here, right there, even here on the side. Looks. I'm gonna take my tweezers here on the side, we'll gently get under the board and pull it away from the surface and just let it start to slowly cool down there. Now carefully lift this off. carefully set it down to cool. And that's the basics to using this machine. There are plenty of things that this plate can be used for when working with the proximity sensor, trying to transfer that over. You can use a heat plate like this to help desolder and resolder uh, procs over so you don't lose face ID. And for heating up a board generally, you can use this, but having the other four inserts that allow you to work on all of the sandwich boards for the iPhone 10 to the 14 Pro Max, uh, this, this right here, this is a great set to have. There'll be a link in the description where you can get this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Oh,